Good Monday morning to you. Pastor Jerry Scott here. This is Coffee Break Reflection. I hope you had a great weekend. There's a strategy that's often used in American football by a winning team if they have possession of the ball with two minutes or less left in the game. They run out the clock. The quarterback lets the maximum time pass, takes the snap, quickly kneels to end the play, and repeats that several times until time's expired and the game is over. The ball isn't advanced. There's no play attempted. Why? Because by kneeling on the ball, so to speak, there's no risk of losing it to the other team in a fumble. There's no imperative to attempt any plays to long pass down the field or a running play because they're winning. So they run out the clock. Now, I, I understand the strategy, but man, it makes for boring football. Why am I talking about that this morning? I want to ask you, are you living your life just burning through day after day, running out the clock, as it were? Have you determined for whatever reasons in your own life to take no risks, to play it safe, to protect yourself and your time, to hang on to your lead, so to speak? I know the temptation. I do. At the conclusion of yesterday's ministry, a full day at church, while reflecting on the efforts that had been made, I, I wondered aloud, am I just running out the clock? This past year has been one of the most challenging years of ministry in my entire lifetime, if not the most challenging. Oh, I know. It's been difficult for all of us in different ways. I'm not, I'm not seeking sympathy. In December 2019, before the pandemic arrived, before it was even on our awareness, I had informed the church board that it was my intent to step down from the pastoring of the church at the end of 2021. And at the time, I had hoped for a good last year, a strong finish. But life happened. In March, the church closed down for months, and when we reopened it, it was to limited attendance and diminished ministry. So many weeks pass with my sense that there's been no advance in the work. And the frustrations that are common to life at this time may tempt you, as it does me, to just kneel on the ball and run out the clock. Christians, we must not do this. The scripture makes an imperative argument for us to stay in the game, to keep extending maximum effort. When we choose to let ourselves get preoccupied with secondary issues, when we waste endless hours in studying the issues, referring something else to committee, to in refusing to engage our minds with the hard stuff, to ignore the questions that beg for real answers, to pray sleepy prayers that have no passion, we're not really in the game, are we? Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit to address us in this way. Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm reading from the King James. I almost never use that old English translation, but I want a phrase to stick in your mind this morning. That phrase, redeem the time. Hold on to that in your memory. Redeem the time. Here's what Paul writes. Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. That passage is a series of directives that build one upon the other. I think they are imperatives for us on this Monday morning. I know they are for me. Maybe this coffee break is just written for Jerry. Number one, Paul by the Spirit says, Wake up, rise from the dead. Christians can slip into kind of a zombie state. Walking through the motions, going to church, singing the songs, all without life. Without any awareness or hunger for the Holy Spirit. Paul says, wake up, shake off the lethargy. He builds on that by saying, walk circumspectly, look around. There are people all around us who are existing without God, without hope. People whose lives are confused. Are we aware of their needs? Do we even see our own real need or are we just staring at the ground in front of us, blind to life's reality that swirls on the periphery of our vision. Number three, he says, redeem the time. This is the heart of this passage. The word that Paul used in that original text, which we translate redeem, is a powerful one in its imagery. 
It was a word used of paying a ransom for someone who needed rescue. It was a word also used about buying freedom for someone who had found themselves in debtor's prison. Or it was used, most powerfully for our purposes today, about the price of freedom that was paid for a slave. When a person was redeemed, he was able to return to life. He was able to be useful once again. If we're running out the clock in life, we have sold ourselves into a kind of slavery. We've become unproductive. We're useless to the kingdom of God. And so the word says, redeem the time. (laughs) Pay the price of sacrifice to own your time once again, to make your life count for something. And then building on that, he says, and understand the will of God. Yes, Christian, this is a critical factor. The word reminds us in 1 Corinthians 6, you don't belong to yourself. God bought you, redeemed you with a high price. So you must honor God. God freed you and me from our hopelessness. He freed us from slavery to self. He took away the penalty of the fallen human nature that made us objects of destruction. He redeemed us and made us useful again. And now he says, I want you to serve me. Don't just run out the clock. Serve me. Know my will. Understand the will of God. How can we do that? It's not difficult. Really, a lot of us complicate this, but really what he desires from you, number one, is that we love him and we love others with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. He desires that we become sanctified, just a fancy word for devoted to his purposes, holy people. He desires that we will pursue him in worship that is real, that is deep, that is from the heart. So this Monday morning, I want you to ask yourself, as I'm asking myself, are you just running out the clock? If you discern with the help of God that you've settled for a life without risk, that you're content to just let day after day pass without any real or meaningful spiritual service, take the wisdom of the word. Wake up. Look around, redeem the time, understand the will of God. Here's that passage again. It's our word from the word. I leave it with you this morning. Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful how you live. Don't be unwise, be wise. Make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Don't be foolish. Understand what the Lord's will is. Ephesians chapter 5. Would you pray with me this morning? Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning opening my heart, my mind, my soul to you. Asking, Lord, that you would help me to be worthy of the price of redemption you paid for me in Christ Jesus. I pray, Lord, that I will pursue you. Wake us up, Lord, from the zombie state that slips over us. Help us, Lord, not to settle for a life of comfort and ease with no risk. Lord, I pray that the work that we do as it is informed by your spirit would be fruitful and effective for the kingdom of God. Bless us in this new week. Be with my friends, Lord. Give them peace, give them healing, give them hope in these times. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, have a great day. Thank you for the opportunity of sharing with you again on this Monday morning. The Lord bless you real good. I'll see you tomorrow. And until then, Walk with Jesus.